Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. As always, if you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so, I would greatly appreciate it, and also feel free to leave a comment and or suggestion down below about what you would like to see next. So for today's video, I want to go over a solution to an interesting problem that I ran across a while ago. The request was to essentially get the number of years between two different dates, and I ended up using a Salesforce formula to calculate that. One of the interesting things about that though was that this formula field needed to account uh, leap years as well. So let's go over the solution to see how I did that. So let's jump into our Salesforce org and see how we can go about creating that Salesforce formula to solve this problem. In our Salesforce org, I think we'll use the account object. I'm pretty sure in this trailhead org I have in my account record right here, you'll see on this page layout, that we have this field called contract date. And essentially, I think what I'll do just to kind of build out this scenario we're kind of working with, let's say that the contract date is essentially when this specific account signed a contract with our company, our imaginary company. And the request that we'll receive that we received is someone in sales wants to know how many years have passed by since the contract date was signed. So essentially, it'll be the years between this date and today's date. So this formula field should be able should recalculate itself pretty much every single day or whenever this record is opened. And not only should it just give us the, the number of years that have passed by, but also any any fractions of a year left over. So, you know, for example, today's date is November 10th, 2021. But as we progress into the future, uh, let's say, for example, next month, it would be a bit more than 11 years, right? So we want to take into account the the fraction of the days left over. So in, in that scenario, it would be about 11 years and some change that have passed by since the contract date was assigned. So let's go ahead and create our formula field. I will jump into the back end right here. I will go and click on edit object. So because we're getting this error, uh, I'll go ahead and just jump into Salesforce Classic very quickly to just create that formula field. So let's do that. Create formula field. And let's call this years after signing contract. Okay. And we're going to make this a number field and we'll leave two decimal points. That's fine. So let's start working on our formula field. Uh, like I said, we want to find the, let me go ahead and close this and go back. We want to find the number of years that have passed by since this contract date. So what I'm going to do first to start off with, what I probably should do is ensure that that contract date field is not blank. So we'll say something like if not is blank. And keep in mind that I'm not an expert Salesforce administrator. I just know some basics about Salesforce formulas. So if you have any better way of doing this, feel free to let me know in the comments section down below. But anyways, we're going to say if that contract date is not blank, then we can go ahead and calculate the year since. Okay, so let's go ahead and close, close this up. So essentially this is what we're going to have if this is not blank right here then we're going to have some output if it is blank then i'm just going to say this is null and then right here at the bottom we'll treat blank fields as blanks okay so let's start off with if it's not blank what should we do well i think we should start by calculating the number of years between the two the two date times, one being the contract date and the other being today's date. And what I want to do is I, I want to get the difference of just the years themselves. So what we're going to do is let's get the year of today. And we're going to subtract that with the year of our contract date. Okay. Once we have that, I want to add which will essentially be the remainder. So, and what I want to do is essentially get the number of days between today's date and the contract date, but we don't want to worry about 
the year. So essentially we're looking for the remainder. And let me go ahead and write this out so it's, it doesn't look as abstract. So what I'm going to say is we're going to take today and we're going to subtract the year of today. Or essentially, we're going to build up a date, right? That, that's, that's what I'm saying right here. So let me go ahead and close that. So the date that we're building up is going to have the year of today. And then we're going to take the month of the contract date. And lastly, let's take the date, the day of our contract day as well. Okay. And let's go ahead and close these brackets. We have... That's a mistake. Let's go ahead and close our brackets. That's one. That's two. We have we should have three right here. Okay. Yes. So like I said, what, what we're doing right here is essentially we're going to subtract today's date, which is the day, month, and year. And then right here, this date that we've built up is contains today's year or this year, but the month and day of our contract. So this is kind of just taking the remainder of the days that aren't necessarily a full year. And when you do, when you add it to the number of years that have passed by, well, this right here could either be a num a positive or a negative number. And what it's going to do is it, it's either going to add the fraction of the, of the, of the days between or subtract this year right here. So kind of to explain all of all this information right here, Essentially, what's happening is we're getting the years between the today and our contract. And then what we're doing here is we're getting kind of like the fraction, the, the fraction of today, which includes year, day, and month. And this date that we built up, which contains the year of today, but the month and day of our contract date. So this gets us the fraction. This portion right here gets us the fraction of, of the days between those two dates, uh, which could be positive or negative, depending on if there is any overlap or if it's been more, more than a year or less than a year. And then it's added to the actual years between those two dates. I hope that kind of makes sense. So let's go ahead and clean up this formula field a little bit before we kind of wrap it up. Uh, I think I made a mistake here. This should be after day. Oh, and since we want to get the number of years, what we probably should do is we should divide it by 365. That is roughly a year. And let's close off our if. So basically, if, if this criteria, criteria is not true, then it will just default it to null, and that should be fine. Go ahead and close this. Okay, and I think I have another mistake here. And unfortunately, usually what I would do is I would kind of build this formula field either like in VS Code where there's some where you can have an extension that can kind of format it for you, or you can uh, also install a plugin that, that has like kind of like an advanced formula. Uh, since I'm using Safari, I don't know if I have access to that. So, so I'm kind of making a bit more mistakes because I don't have all the, the help I would normally have. So uh, I think after here, this is a comma. Yes. So we're essentially we're saying. If this is not blank, then do all of this right here. But if the contract date is blank, then just return null and that should be fine. Okay, let's check our syntax to make sure that it's correct. And it looks like we have a mistake and that is because it is contract date, not contract. So let me go ahead and update those fields like so. So let's check again one more time. And it says here we're getting an incorrect number of parameters for year. Let's see, so right here, let's see what we did wrong. And it looks like I'm missing a set of parentheses right here. And we should also probably close them out right here. And I know that this looks a bit messy, but I think that looks good. So let's try checking syntax and it looks like we have no errors. Okay, so last, let's, let's put some help text, I guess. It's not really necessary for this example, but we'll put, the number of years since the contract date. Okay, it's just some helpful information. Let's go ahead and click on next. Click on next again. And let's just click save. It's fine if 
if it's applied to all the page layouts. So let's go back into our record itself and let's refresh it. And you'll see here a few, a few fields down that we have some information for years after signing contract. So as of right now, it looks like it's been 10 years, 10.99, 10.99 years since our contract was signed. If we, let's, let, let's change this contract date a little bit. Let's say it was signed exactly 11 years. So today being November 10th, 2021, let's go ahead and change this to November 10th, 2010. And let's click on save. And we see here that our, our formula field actually updated correctly. So essentially what it's telling us is that it's been 11 years after the contract was signed, which is correct here. And let's go ahead and play this, play with this a little bit. Let's go ahead and say it, that we actually signed it in 2009 and we'll choose a random month. So we'll say August 4th, 2009. Let's go ahead and click save. And now it's saying here that it's been 12 years, 12.27 years, which looks like it's right. And just to verify that it indeed is correct, we can go to timeanddate.com, which has some pretty cool and nifty calculators. And I just plugged in the start date and the end date. And here it says that it's been 4,481 days between those two dates. And if we go ahead and pull out our calculator and just kind of do some simple math, let's go ahead and take the days divided by 365, which is roughly a year. And we do indeed get 12.27 years which is pretty much the same as what we got in our formula field. Now, I don't think this is probably 100% correct, but I, I do believe that this probably fits most use cases. So I think that's pretty much it. A bit of a shorter video today, but I hope you guys have found this useful. Let me know if you guys have any questions or suggestions in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys next time.